Hey everybody, I'm excited to chat with you today and we're going to be diving into customer acquisition costs or CAC and the model I've built uh, to determine your overall customer acquisition costs as well as customer acquisition costs by channel. The reality is that in digital marketing or even more particular search marketing, we've become overly dependent and reliant on marketing metrics. These are cost per conversion or cost per acquisition, cost per click, conversion rate, and in-platform marketing or advertising metrics. And the reality is, is decision makers and leaders, they, they like these, they understand these, they really actually do, but they don't put as much weight behind these as they do financial metrics, right? As marketers, we're given budgets, we're given resources, we're given team members, and we're expected to generate a return off of these resources, especially our budgets. But the reality is that we rarely as marketers look at headcount, look at spend, and then correlate those numbers back to a real customer acquisition cost ratio between three and five to judge our success. So today we're gonna walk through a model, I'm gonna give it to you as a template, and we're gonna analyze and look at how can we as search marketers get away from reporting strictly on marketing metrics, but evolve or graduate into reporting directly on financial metrics to create alignment with leadership teams, increase our budgets, and generate frankly, that feeling of value and worth that we so drastically want from those who we work with so that they truly understand the value that we generate for the organizations we serve or work at. So let's dive in. And a little FYI, I am wearing the hoodie today. Uh, tore my Achilles. I've been like bedridden for the last two, three weeks. So I've been working from home, but uh, excited to dive into this model with you today. All right, everybody. We are into the goods, the good stuff, the model. I have it all in front of you. Um, I'm using some sample data, so um, not real data, but definitely applies. A uh, bit of a templateer, so I took parts of this template from other places online, as all great marketers and uh, thought leaders do. So let's dive in and, and just take a look at this. So the way it's broken down, uh, you have your overall customer acquisition cost. Okay, that's what this, um, it called sheet this sheet is about now I have it broken down my channel um, so you know I'm pulling the numbers and I would recommend doing this pull these numbers directly from the income statement on overall so what you're gonna be looking at essentially is a total cost to acquire all um, customers that's gonna be taking into account not just your uh, like what you see on the marketing side but also, and if you want to do this as just like a CMO or just a new marketing department, this is headcount. This is tools. This is all budgets. This is anything which the CFO or the financial team and accounting and your bookkeeping team is putting into your department. Not just your spend, but every single cost, including your own. Now, if you're a chief revenue officer and you're managing both sales and marketing, take all those costs, put it in here. Uh, and I've got a nice explanation here for you. So this is your total cost to acquire all customers. Uh, then what we want to look at is for, I'm doing this year to date in this analysis, but for every, any given time frame, uh, any new, all the customers you had, uh, your close rate. Now let me put here, um, I use Reckoner for this. So I use Reckoner for this. Uh, it's a great tool. I manage our sales development and kind of executive team here as well. So all of their metrics, close rate, ops created, uh, days to sell, like time to sell, uh, all of those are in Reckoner, amazing tool and incredibly affordable. I highly recommend. Um, then you have your opportunity cost. So what I did, and this is something that was different than what they had built and what I kind of put together, is you can take your close rate, so total new customers, close rate, and then that gives you your opportunity cost, aka cost per pitch, cost per demo, cost per proposal. So this is really, really helpful, especially for your advertising teams. Uh, and then that gives you your total customer acquisition cost. Now, then you can see in this model and the demo numbers, uh, we also need our average LTV. Um, if you don't know your average LTV, one of the easiest things you can do uh, for the model is to derive that number based on your minimums. So in other words, if you were to acquire a minimum, let's say, like for example, a directive, our minimum right now is 6K a month on a 12 month contract. So in this example, you can see 72,000, that would be our minimum contract. So if you can't get your average order value, like we have ours, but I'm using dummy data, use your minimum. So the lowest amount a customer can pay you 
period, as your customer acquisition cost. So that no matter what, you're always profitable based on your advertising. And so what you want to have here is you're aiming for a customer acquisition cost ratio of three to five. You're also going to need your gross profit margin. Uh, you're also going to need the lifespan of a customer. Uh, let me move this out so you can see exactly that number. Uh, and that will then give you your LTV. Then, essentially, that ratio, you're aiming for a three to five under customer acquisition cost. Okay, So this is for the overall model. Now, what I built is to look at, okay, so that's where we're at today. But let's say for our Google Ads, what if, what do we need to be at? Like, what should our target be? So what I did is I broke this out for you as target customer acquisition cost as well as actual customer acquisition cost. So for your target customer acquisition cost, what you do is you're going to take, essentially, you're going to replace this formula here with the number one. So what that means is what it costs to get one customer. And then you can essentially take leave everything else constant, so 72,000, uh, your 50, your 0.85. Oh, let's update that over here just so the model matches everywhere. We can do that actually later. Um, but then what you're going to be able to do is, so when you play with this, if you don't start here, your number might be something like 9,500. So you'll see 9,500 lowers that customer acquisition cost ratio uh, or, or raises it, I apologize. apologies. So if you go to 25,000, for example, that's going to lower it because it's costing too much to acquire a customer, which tells you, okay, we might need to reassess this channel or really focus on lowering our cost per conversion, which is where the marketing metrics come in because our financial metrics aren't right. So in this model, you can see based on the metrics we have here, so our close rate and our gross margin, our LTV and our lifespan of a customer, we need in this model to acquire a customer for no more than $10,200, okay? So your business is gonna be different than mine or the sample here, but you're gonna need those numbers to be successful. Uh, you can also then compare it, right? So in actuality, this channel in the model is at 0.7, sales development is at three, clutch is at 1.42, SEO is at 10. So every channel performs differently. By assessing this and looking at this as a marketing leader, you're gonna be able to better allocate resources, headcount, and your personal time to focus into the channels that have the best customer acquisition cost ratio for your business. So a couple other things real quick. Um, make sure that you include like an SEO, for example, headcount, agency fees, software count, not just like, oh, well, SEO is free because there's no spend. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. So please holistically look at every one of the costs associated with your channel so you get accurate numbers. Now, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments below and love to answer them. But thanks and have a great day.